with hundreds of thousands of women competing at the high school college and even professional level in a variety of sports today it's hard to imagine a time when they weren't allowed to participate but for former s t s u basketball coach nancy neighbor that was her childhood i developed a love for sport as a young girl, Niebuhr enjoyed playing sports with the guys. So when a neighborhood boy brought up the idea of trying out for the Little League baseball team, she was excited. Yeah, I could throw the ball and catch the ball and hit the ball as good as any boy in that tryout. However, Niebuhr playing in the league wasn't a hit with everyone. A parent complained and they told me I couldn't play because I was a girl. And that was really my first experience with inequity in sports. Unfortunately, that wouldn't be the last time she would face discrimination. When enrolling in college courses, a few coaching classes caught Niebuhr's eye. On the course syllabus, it said for men only. So it's ironic I became a basketball coach. Niebuhr became a pioneer for women's basketball in the state when she took the head coaching job at Mitchell High School. She led the Colonels to the first ever girl state tourney in 1974. Later, she became the head coach at SDSU, but she never wasted an opportunity to tell her players how fortunate they were. I would stop practice and say and sit our players down and tell them how fortunate they were to be able to play college basketball. Not only to be able to play but to b receive a scholarship to be able to participate and play in a game that they loved. And since Title IX went into effect in 1972, thousands of girls have been given the opportunity to play. I've been able to play ever since I was a little girl out in the driveway and everything and uh, so it's just always been a passion of mine so I'm lucky to be able to be involved in organized sports. A feeling shared by many as Title IX's anniversary approaches. In Brookings, Katie Lingle, Kelloland Sports.